Good morning to you, good afternoon to you, and good evening to you from wherever you are joining us tonight. It is Mayegun live. Apologies for the late start. What many of you actually understand. Read the caption of the broadcasts. The description of this broadcast. What you should do. Share the broadcast after liking it. To invite your friends and your not so friendly friends. Tell them that my ego today. Papioli might have found uh, a solution to the banditry in Nigeria. You remember when I told you that Nigeria is a is like an asylum where lunatics have taken over the asylum lunis people that should either be in jail or in psychiatric homes getting care they are those making decisions critical decisions for that contraption all you have to do is to share the broadcast thank you very much and thank you so much for uh joining me uh, again ladies and gentlemen let's kind of uh, delve into it straight up and i am going to try and make it up to us okay we're going to have all our full hours tonight as long as uh, you are up for it now we are starting with uh, the apabiolis ja ibo uh, gaf and it is not a sleep this is how useless the rogues in charge of nigeria are and when they speak like this including call you will never see them talk about uh, their policies the progress of it the challenges things that you can easily understand to acknowledge them or see them as a government these guys are always either just talking about nonsense mostly like they are a charity sort of not government so that's why most of the time they are so irresponsible that they kind of feel angry if uh, you rebook them when they abandon their duty for oh god let's just pray to god to help us from the people who are making and taking critical decisions in a country however akwabioli is the number three man in nigeria after kolu and shiti man that is the number three man in Nigeria. So he was having a media party, somehow, as usual, making themselves feel good. I've done so great for this country. The policy of Tifnubu is so working. We are turning the corner. We are baby walking. Another nonsense they say to you. That's how they feel. They are doing so great. Anyone who is not feeling that is either uh, an eater or. That person is blind. 
kind of that's the way they see it. Then boom. Steve Numbu's policy on student loan. Apabioli said is one of their greatest bills that they passed because right now 30,000 Nigerian students have been shortlisted. There's no proof of that. Too. There is nothing of such, all right? But the number three man in Nigeria, as they are those who actually produce fake news, lies, they get so mad if they get busted. Okay? So he said 30,000 Nigerian students have been shortlisted for student loan. But the greatest, that's one of the greatest, but the greatest of the, of the bills that this National Assembly, they have passed in the last one year is returning Nigeria back to the colonial anthem. And according to him, it was because Obasan just stopped and changed the anthem in 1978. That was what opened the door for banditry, terrorism, because there is no patriotism anymore. The moment Obasan just changed their anthem, patriotism left Nigeria. Because if you are, if you read the content of that anthem, eh, you will be so patriotic. You will not go and kill your neighbor. You will not go and attack your disorder. That's the thought of uh, the number three man in Nigeria. I want you to listen. I think I have a copy of that uh, somewhere here. Inside that same National Assembly. Whatever you do for us here, you do it for National Assembly, you do it for subnational parliament. The bill that was sent to us by President Paul Abachinibu on students' loans and scholarship program to enable Nigerian vulnerable students the less privileged to obtain higher education. And as I speak to you now, over 30,000 30, Nigerian students have already been selected to benefit from that. <laughs> that is one of the bills that I would say appeals to me the most. The other one of social impact is reverting to our own national anthem. A lot of people are not aware that there was a panel set up made up of Nigerians to receive inputs from all over the world in 1959. So when people are saying, oh, we are bringing you colonial anthem, please look into the history of the Nigeria we held the If we kept to that national anthem, we probably would not have had the treaty in Nigeria. But if you take your neighbor as your brother, you would not want to kill your brother, would you? Yes. If you take your neighbor as your brother, you will not want to go into the farm to behead your brother. Whatever you do for us here, you do it for National Assembly, you do it for some... New Zans, Lily. That is their thought process. The increase in insecurity, terrorism in Nigeria is not because of an anthem. It all started from those who were, who were using religion as a tool to access power. That is that. Then the successive governments in Nigeria who have allowed that to fester. Then Bokwari came. Then add that as well to the poverty, mismanagement, bad, bad governance over the years, which has rendered more people poorer and easily recruitable, you know, re easily recruitable into any form of a criminality, any form of agenda, and any form of violence. That's corruption, bad governance, negligence, not taking responsibilities, on the part of the authorities or the government of Nigeria is further creating more, uh, you know, recruits from the basket of the poverty 
more recruits for many other criminal agendas in Nigeria. And there is no amount of uh, time you hail Nigeria, you hail the that is going to end that. But Pabuli and Gang didn't think so. But have you listened to Kolu himself? Anyway, this is how they kind of make themselves feel good. Ah, power is good though. Ah, power. We are in power. We are the ones in power. We can do whatever we like. They sit in Numbu almost every hour in Abuja, especially those uh, who are miling around him. Then Tifnungu took a break to Lagos. So they went there again to go and pay him salad visit and all of that. That yeah, Pabuli was there too. But you just hear the number three man in Nigeria. Listen to the number one man from the contraption, call himself. For people to understand the reforms that we embark upon. You know, he's talking about this reform that we are back upon. And guess what the reform is? Taxation and borrowing. IMF, World Bank, no investor, no nothing. But right now, they kind of feel like uh, as uh, bigger, bigger businesses are leaving Nigeria, Lebanese and the rest of them are coming in, you know, Asians, and I'm coming to that. But let Tifnubu tell you about that policy. Floating of the Naira is one of them. But listen. For people to understand the reforms that we embark upon. You know, despite all of that, the need to change the rent seeking minority to be more productive for this economy is very challenging. You st still see smuggling and all of uh, economic sabotage. Why should we not have the country that we embrace a value that charts our course to for ownership and service. Why should we have people removing red tracks and all of that? Stealing electric cables, sabotaging the yeah. <laughs> is we just have to jointly embrace the campaign to change our value system to really tell our people that. The challenge we face is for all of us to change our mindset about our country. Now, we are working at that, and together we will continue. Yes, separation of power, patriotism, dedication, and commitment will get us out of this because we have no other country for this. We came to pay the usual uh, salah homage to the president and commander in chief. It is normal for the National Assembly to do so uh, to the leadership of the country. And uh, by the grace of God, God has kept him alive to see one full year in office and uh, to, for all Nigerians to see the policy direction of his administration uh, is people-centered and that uh, God helping, uh, everything will materialize. That's all we did. And we normally do that in a joint uh, leadership uh, uh, manner. And so uh, both the House of Representatives and the, and the Senate, the speaker is still in uh, Saudi Arabia, 
So represented by the deputy speaker, the house leader, and of course I came also with the entire leadership, including the majority leader, the senator leader. Uh, and then we met with the, with the president to pay homage to him. So pardon me, uh, it's proper to say congratulations as well to yeah. the National Assembly for yeah. you know, making it one year. Yes. And so what uncommon laws are we going to see moving forward to help this administration improve on the economy in particular? Well, we will, we will see a lot of radical uh, ventures. Uh, we, we want to even look at the existing legislations in the country and then provide an uh, enabling environment for ease of doing business. What Nigeria needs now is uh, foreign direct investment, so we have to make sure that we tinker with the legislations uh, to make it very conducive for foreigners to bring money and to present. So I, I want to congratulate all Nigerians. I've, I've congratulated the president, and I want to say Barack Obama. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Those are the people in charge of Nigeria. Tiof Numbu is talking about a reform. Did you hear any of that? Eh? Uh, Akwabiole is talking about uncommon laws. And that, ah, man, you would have to feel sorry for that country and the people there. So to them, your new national, no, your new old national anthem, maybe your old new national anthem, some of us will never understand because we are under 50. Those who are above 50, the people that destroyed Nigeria, eh? they said they are the ones who understand that uh, anthem, the two clowns of the National Assembly of Nigeria. I, I would like to put the question. The speaker has just mentioned something that those who are below 50 years may not know much about the old national anthem. So can I put the question? Those in support that the band should lead us to sing the new national anthem adopted by both chambers of the House of Representatives and the Senate, can I hear you? Say aye. Aye. Those against. That those who are saying we should use our voices. Can you say nay? <laughs> okay. As Democrats, the eye is having. So the <laughs> May we now rise for the national anthem. At least you remember that. So now they are singing the national anthem and Nigerians are now more patriotic. And except for some of us who are not in Nigeria, I think. And that is why one of them decided to report Adeola Fayewu, that vlogger. You know Adeola Fayewu now? Well, they have taken in our case for asking that or for exposing how much lawmakers earn in Nigeria? Okay, how much is your salary? Now, one of them got mad and reported that to his colleagues. Clowns. One Adeola Fire, who alleged on social media and Instagram that I, a member of this house, Collect basic salary of 2.5 per month, furniture allowance 7.5 million per month, newspaper allowance 1.2 million per month, wardrobe allowance 621,000 per month, recess allowance 248,000 per month, accommodation allowance 4.9 million per month, utility allowance 828,000 per month, personal assistant allowance 621,000 per month, and so on. And very interesting for you to know that this Adeola Fire does not reside in Nigeria, it's in UK. And this is the same person, December time, when one of our colleagues, maybe by mistake, said trailers of rice were given to members of the National Assembly. This same lady 
was spreading it everywhere that you should ask your representatives where is your trailers of rice. So if this house does not take a, a stand on this and take a New Zealand. You know, those are the clowns in charge of Nigeria. And to those of you who are disturbing God, 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 God is tired of you. Honestly, if I was God, I would be tired of you. Because I remember when one, yeah, one pastor had said this. In fact, I don't know if uh, any of you remember that when they told you that. I'm going to go look for that clip and show you. And today, uh, anyway, uh, let's go a bit uh, forward, okay, before we go deeper as well. I've got updates on uh, the rivers. Uh, you know, the river said the Baku, Omazi, Namdikan was in court today, where he is challenging them on uh, his uh, fundamental uh, human rights. I'm not going to defend nothing, okay, except you actually start obeying what your own uh, court said first. So, Challenging that uh, he must be released before any trial at all. And I was in court today also to remind everyone that it, he has total averseness uh, to any violence that is taking place in Eastern Nigeria. This would be like about, uh, about fifth or six times. Something that we can, you know, figuratively say, I mean, sorry, figuratively say one million times that he's saying. That if you want the, uh, what do you call it, if you want the politically sponsored uh, insecurity in Eastern Nigeria to end, if the government is not involved, if they say, yeah, we are not involved, they let him go and see how that will disappear. So this, uh, this morning, it was in court. I had a few of those people say, added here, yeah, watch some. Oh, come on, go, go, go.